Hi, and welcome back to this training on post-surgical recovery following a rotator cuff repair surgery. My name is Anthony Maritato. I am a licensed physical therapist, and the information I'm gonna be sharing with you here comes from the post-surgical protocol published by the Brigham and Women's Hospital, which is a teaching affiliate of Harvard Medical School. So in today's video, we're gonna be covering one day post-op through six weeks post-op. I'm gonna be sharing the information, the recommendations, and helping you to understand what to expect following your surgery. So from the general information and goals, they indicate that this is the healing phase. The strength of the repair is initially only the strength of the sutures and the anchors that are attaching it to the bone. That's an important component because patients always want to know what can they do, what, can they, what do they have to avoid, and the reality is the repair site is very vulnerable to re-injury. The muscles and tissues around the repair are all pretty healthy and normal. So we're trying to protect that repair site to allow it to strengthen and become just as strong as the healthy tissue around it. At four weeks post-op, the strength of the tendon repair is only about 20% of normal tendon attachment. So four weeks, you're still in that maximum protection phase. That's why you're in the sling 24 seven, you're sleeping in it, you're doing everything in it, unless you're taking a shower or doing your therapy exercises. Hence, prior to six weeks post-op, absolutely no active motion of the arm is permitted as it may pull on the repair and disrupt the attachment of the tendon to the bone. So we're trying to allow that tendon to grow and attach back into the bone with natural tissue. Uh, the goal of this phase of recovery is to protect the tendon repair while gently gaining motion and preventing the formation of adhesions, which is scar tissue, which might limit range of motion later. But I can tell you at least locally, most of the surgeons who are performing rotator cuff repairs would rather you have a strong, solid repair site and stretch back out a limited range of motion in the shoulder in the future than become too aggressive too early damage the repair, but have more motion. So you're, you're, if you're gonna have to sacrifice something, you wanna sacrifice range of motion early on to allow the tendon to repair, repair in, in a complete and full manner. Uh, another goal of this phase of rehab is to reduce inflammation and pain. The sling with the abduction pillow, that's the pillow that goes under the arm to kind of keep it away from the body just a little bit. The sling and abduction pillow keeps the arm in a position that takes tension off of the tendon repair. If you remember from previous videos, the main part, the supraspinatus tendon, which is the most common site of the repair, that tendon attaches into the humeral bone, the top of the upper arm bone, and it's responsible for the first zero to about 15 degrees of ebduction. That's moving the arm away from the body. So with the pillow that your arm is resting on, it's taking the tension off of the repair site, which is an important component. It's also helping improve blood flow and circulation to the area, which will facilitate healing. According to the protocol, activities to avoid. So there is no active range of motion of the shoulder, even if you have minimal to no pain or other symptoms. So you're not allowed to lift the arm away from you, in front of you, behind you, Avoid pushing yourself up from a lying or seated position with the arm. Now, the arm should be in the sling, so you really shouldn't be able to use the arm anyway. And avoid aggressive or painful passive range of motion or stretching that provokes muscle guarding and spasm. And this is probably one of the most important components here. So whether you're doing it on your own or you're working with a therapist, there is a natural tendency for you, the patient, to what we call guard or protect when somebody is trying to move the arm through a passive range of motion, you're gonna naturally be a little bit fearful of the pain. And so you're gonna tighten, you're gonna resist, or you're gonna try and help the therapist move through that range of motion, which again is putting tension through the surgical site. It's not what you wanna do. You wanna try to be as relaxed and as loose as possible. And your therapist will share some strategies with you to help facilitate the um, 
we'll call it the activation of the opposite muscles. So if you're not allowed to lift the arm away, sometimes there are strategies and techniques where you would be pulling or tugging the arm into you while the arm is being moved in the opposite direction. It's just a way to make sure the surgical site is fully protected. So the next section in this module is what you should be doing during this phase. Let's take a look at that. You can go about your normal daily activities around the house, your work, as long as you keep your arm in the sling. So you're going to be using your non-surgical arm, your legs, the rest of your body to do stuff. We want you to ice your shoulder regularly during this phase, three to four times a day for up to 20 minutes at each session. You can use uh, what's called a cryo cuff. I'll share some links um, or an ice pack. There's recipes online and showing you how to use a combination of water and um, uh, rubbing alcohol so that it can be very cold, nearly frozen, but not hard like a brick of ice. But there's also some really great gel packs you can buy through various vendors that are relatively inexpensive. Um, there's devices that will allow you to pump cold water through the shoulder. It, it's just a lot of different ways you can do it but they're recommending 20 minute sessions three to four times a day. Your surgeon will refer you to physical therapy sometime in the first six weeks following your surgery. The time of the start of your physical therapy will be determined by the size of your tear, tissue quality of the rotator cuff, and whether or not you had any other structures that were repaired. So quite often patients will also have a biceps repair in addition to the rotator cuff repair. And as it was said here, depending on your age, tissue quality, the health of the shoulder, you might start therapy sooner, you might start therapy later. We have patients with me that start one day after surgery. We have other patients that wait the full six weeks before starting physical therapy. Uh, your therapist will have you work on activities to enhance the mobility of your shoulder, shoulder blade, elbow, wrist, and hand. Probably one of the biggest things that I see happen after a rotator cuff repair is patients are sometimes so compliant, they protect the surgical site, with, which is amazing, but then the elbow, the wrist, the fingers, other parts of the body pay the price because remember, those other parts of the body are still normal and healthy. So while you're immobilizing the shoulder, we don't wanna sacrifice the health and mobility of the rest of that side of your body, your neck, your shoulder blade, your elbow, wrist, and fingers. So there's a lot of other things that you can do during the four to six week wait period that protects the surgical site, but does not sacrifice the health of the remaining tissue. We want to focus, so they're saying while lying on your back, keep a pillow or a towel under the elbow to keep your arm in a slightly flexed position in line with your trunk. So you don't wanna be in a position where you're laying back and the, the elbow and the shoulder is back behind you. You should always be able to see your elbow. No shoulder extension at this time is permitted. So if I look down, I should be able to see it. We shouldn't let the shoulder and elbow get behind us. This is also going to assist with reducing pain. You're going to find that sweet position that allows you to do what you need to do without increasing the pain, swelling, inflammation. Uh, I've got some videos that I'll share with you guys to show you some positioning in a recliner, in a bed, on a couch that tends to do best for patients who have had a rotator cuff repair surgery. You're gonna to need to keep your arm in the sling or immobilizer and remove it only for bathing and exercise. You may loosen it so that your elbow can straighten but keep the palm up. Immobilization of the shoulder joint is typically done for four to six weeks, followed by a gradual weaning of the sling. And basically what happens is once your surgeon determines that it's safe for you to start taking the sling off more, you're gonna find that you're going to be happy. You're going to be, you know, feeling great to get out of the sling for an hour, hour and a half, and then your shoulder is going to start to throb and ache. So you put the sling back on, you wear it for a couple hours, then you take it off. You have another 30 minutes, 60 minutes out of it. And gradually you're going to go from more time in the sling, less time out to more time out of the sling, less time in. Many surgeons will recommend that you continue to wear the sling while you're out in public, just to kind of be a reminder to say, hey, 
the arm isn't 100 percent yet we're going to still kind of keep it protected during that phase until you are 100 percent out of the sling for all daily activities by the end of week six you should begin to um where are we sorry by the end of week six you can begin with light waist level activities uh, you can shower with a waterproof dressing two days after surgery keep your forearm at your side or by your hip bone this prevents internal rotation so turning the thumb in uh, you may get you may get your shoulder wet without the dressing by or after the seventh day of surgery Every surgeon is going to be a little different. Follow your personal surgeon's guidelines on this. You may sit, sit on a stationary bike in order to get some aerobic exercise. I cannot tell you how frequently I'm treating patients in the clinic and the patient will say to me, well, wait a minute, I had shoulder surgery. Why am I riding a recumbent bike or a stationary bike? Well, it's because you still have a heart and you still have blood vessels and arteries and we still need to keep everything healthy. And the reality is if we can get other parts of your body exercising, moving, we can get your heart beating, we can get your blood flowing, you are going to heal not just more quickly, but more effectively. Your body is a system and if the rest of the system is getting the work that it needs, your shoulder will absolutely benefit. So guys, that is the end of this part of the module. In the next video, we're gonna go to talking about what should happen, what you can expect once you actually start physical therapy. I'll catch you guys on the next video.